A person in full consciousness of me, knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities, the Supreme Lord of all planets and demigods, and the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities, attains peace from the pangs of material misery. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The conditioned souls within the clutches of the illusory energy are all anxious to attain peace in the material world, but they do not know the formula for peace, which is explained in this part of the Bhagavad Gita. The greatest peace formula is simply this. Lord Krishna is the beneficiary of, in all human activities. Man should offer everything to the transcendental service of the Lord because he is the proprietor of all planets and the demigods therein. 
No one is greater than He. He is greater than the greatest of the demigods, Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma. In the Vedas, Sveteshvatara Upanishad, the Supreme Lord is described as Tam Ishwaram Paramam Maheshwaram. Under the spell of illusion, living entities are trying to be lords of all they survey, but actually they are dominated by the material energy of the Lord. But they are dominated by the material energy of the Lord. Uh -huh. The Lord is the master of material nature and the conditioned souls are under the stringent rules of material nature. Unless one understands these bare facts, it is not possible to achieve peace in the world, either individually or collectively. This is the sense of Krishna consciousness. Lord Krishna is the supreme predominator and all living entities, in, including the great demigods, are his subordinates. One can attain perfect peace only in complete Krishna consciousness. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Shavakaya Chatur Nilitandena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishnam Stavitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsya Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Rajanatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Harijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Vita Shri Vishakanitam Sha He Krishna Karma Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpade Gopesha Gopika Tantra Radha Kanta Namostade Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishavanu Sude Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupa Tarukyashara Kripa Sindhu Vaevacha Paditanam Pavanipyo Vaishnavipyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadabha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhatta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So I picked this verse, I thought it's appropriate in a city like Singapore where there's a, a lot of stress, a lot of uh, tension and uh, pressure in normal living that it's good to have some peace and be reminded of how to be peaceful. We have to be reminded about these things, although we've heard many times, but still it's very easy for us to forget 
We want to do them in the right mood, the right attitude. Everything depends on the attitude in which we do something. The mood, the right mood has to be there. Hmm. And, and that mood should be that we're working for the pleasure of Krishna. We're doing this ultimately for the satisfaction of Krishna, Lord Krishna. Not just only for the family, not just only for the country, not just only for humanity, but ultimately we want to satisfy the Supreme Lord, the Lord of everything, everyone. Why? Because he is the proprietor. As Lord Krishna goes on to explain in the next verse, uh, the, ne the next part of the verse, after talking about yajna and tapasya, bhoktaram yajna tapasya, sarva loka maheshwaram. He is maheshwar, right? I was in Nasik one time, in Maharashtra, in Nasik, and I mentioned about Maheshwar. People often, they have that surname in India, isn't it? They're called Maheshwar. And so in Nasik, somehow, there's many people with that name. <laughs> many people have the name Maheshwar, meaning well, what does it mean? Does it mean they are the proprietors? Maha Ishwara, Maheshwar, Maha I Great Controller. This, of course, this is the disease which we have in the world, in material world. We have the disease, we are thinking we are the controller. We are thinking we are really Maheshwar, right? But, there's only one Mahishwara, one real proprietor, Hare Krishna. The one proprietor, that one proprietor is the, the Lord of the creation, that person from, what, from whom everything comes. You may call God by the name Rama, you may call God by the name Shiva, or Vishnu, or Brahma. We refer to that personality as Krishna. Krishna is the all-attractive person. And he is described like that. He's a speaker, of course, of Bhagavad Gita. And he's speaking here, this verse, People often use the Bhagavad Gita, but at the same, somehow they take out Krishna. <laughs> you know, they will use Krishna's words, but take away Krishna. There was one lady, there's one lady actually in Taiwan, and she's quite a prominent uh, spiritual guide. She teaches people impersonal liberation impersonal meditation. And so she would tell her followers, just as Arjuna surrendered to Krishna, you should surrender to me. <laughs> wow. <Well, laughs> that was her. Anyway, here Lord Krishna is speaking and Lord Krishna is saying that he is the proprietor. Nobody else is the proprietor. Of course, we have temporary claim over things. You know, this apartment belongs to someone, and we have our car, we have some money. We, 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 we're, we have, it's not that we have nothing, but the things which we have, we don't have them for long. We don't keep them forever. Whatever we have, one day we'll have to give them up. We'll have to leave behind everything. It's the nature, it's the law of the material world. That we come with nothing, we will leave. 
In Hindi they say, Kaliha Ayati, Kaliha Chabot. And so that's the law of material nature. We have to understand these laws are there for everyone. The earth planet is divided into so many countries, nations, and within every nation you have different regions, just like you get regions, countries that they're, they, they want to separate their part of the country from the rest of the country. They want to be independent. They don't want to. But ultimately the whole planet is one. And that whole planet belongs to the Supreme Being, the Supreme Personality behind this material creation, the Godhead who may be Vishnu or, as we say, Krishna, because here Lord Krishna is the speaker of the Bhagavad Gita. And he's telling us that he is the proprietor of everything. However, not only is he the proprietor, but he's also adding something which is very important to us. He says, Suridam Sarva Bhutanam Suridam Sarva Bhutanam that he is the best friend of all living entities. So this is also a very crucial point to remember that we have a relationship with him. It's not that he is a person and he's far away from us and we have no way of contacting him. Just like in a country, you know, they have a government, but how easy is it for us to see the government? You know, if I want to see the Prime Minister of the country, is it possible? You know, very difficult to try and go to meet the Prime Minister. But here, we have the Supreme Lord, not just of the planet, but of all planets and all universes. And He's available to all of us. We can communicate with Him. We can reach Him. He can hear us and He can speak to us. This is the unique feature of the personality of Godhead, that he's available to everyone who will make the effort to approach him, to speak to him, to know him. And when we reach out like that, then he also reaches out and he comes forward to help us, to speak to us and to guide us. So this is how we get peace. Peace comes about by that communion with the Supreme Person. And in this age, this age we say is the age of Kali, Kali Yuga. Kali sometimes is translated as the Iron Age. Not much iron is used today, it's more plastic, right, and fiberglass, and microchip, everything's microchips everywhere. So, Kali Yuga is symptomized by a short life. We will say, oh, thank goodness for that. Don't have to live a long time. <laughs> Because the longer you're here, the more the difficulties come, the more the problems come. And so, we have a short life. We want to take advantage of that short life to achieve success in this life. That is the wonderful thing about Kali Yuga, that although we have a short life, 
and we're endowed with so many faults, we have so many mm, bad habits, but still there's one good thing about this Kali Yuga that we can get all success. Not only can we get peace, but we can get out of this world of birth and death. We can transcend the material existence. This verse is also speaking about getting f free from the material perplexities, the problems, the difficulties of life. But we want to go even beyond all of these things and get out of this world of birth and death. And Lord Krishna is giving us a formula how we can do it how we can achieve peace. Kishore Prabhu was telling me he's studying pharmacy. I told him, I said, well, that's the biggest industry today. Everyone buys drugs. You go to anyone's home and you'll see they've got a drug cabinet. They've got a cupboard full of drugs, so many different things which they have, you know. This pill is for, this, this pill is so I can eat my breakfast, this pill is so I can eat lunch, this pill is so I can sleep at night, this pill is to stop my hair going grey. I should have, I should have had some of those pills. <laughs> There's so many things. You get pills for people. The pharmacy industry is huge. And the pharmacists are cleaning up. The, 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 the people doing research in pharmacy, they're, they're making a fortune. It's a huge industry. The drugs they cannot sell in the, in the first world, they dump into the third world. Right? All the... Oh, this drug is harmful, send it to India, send it to Philippines, send it to some other place and sell it there. They make use of everything. Just like cars. Your car gets too old for Singapore, send it to Malaysia. Hmm? So, material world, we're faced with all these problems. And the solution is given to us. The solution to all the problems is simply to come to Krishna consciousness. Consciousness of, first of all, our spiritual identity. Consciousness means, first of all, uh, one of our devotees used to say, first we have to be conscious and then Krishna conscious. So what does it mean to be conscious? We want to understand our identity, first of all, that I am not the body, but I am a soul living in this body. I have a material body. I'm not the body. I am simply the living force in the body. We identify ourselves with this body, and that's the cause of all of the problems. We're thinking, this belongs to me. This is mine. We're thinking, I am the proprietor. <coughs> but what is actually ours? We're hearing Krishna's, everything is His. It's not mine, it's His. He gives us temporary proprietorship. For some time you can have it, but it's not really yours. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a section called the Bhumi Gita. And in the, it's in the eleventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Isn't it? Eleventh canto? Yes, eleventh or twelfth canto. Yeah. Anyway, there's a section there, Bhumi Gita, and it's described how Mother Earth, Mother Earth is Bhumi. And Bhumi is a form in the form of a cow. And cows are very sacred on earth planet. Actually this earth 
is the property of the cows. Bhumi is the deity of the planet and she's the mother of all cows. So the cows are all over the planet, different continents, you can find cows there, different breeds, different varieties. In the spiritual world also there are cows. We have uh, very special cows in the spiritual world. Kamadinu cows. Cows which will fulfill all desires. Here on this planet, cows are generally milking cows. They're, they're dairy herds. They're men. R really, we could think of cow as being provide, providing us with milk which is a very vital substance. If you're going to do yajna, you're going to do worship of the Lord, you should have a cow. And generally people who keep deities, they'll have a cow. And then we then, they'll milk the cow and they can offer the milk for the pleasure of the deity. And there are many rituals which they will do which concern the cow. Cows are very auspicious. So Mother Earth is Bhumi and she's laughing at these two kings because these two kings are fighting each other and each one is saying, this is my land. This land belongs to me. And they're fighting and killing each other. And Mother Earth is laughing at them because before these kings were born, the land is there. And after they go, the land will remain. So what is actually theirs? Nothing is actually there. But this is the illusion of the living entity. We're thinking, this is mine. This belongs to me. So that, that is it nature of the conditioned soul. Conditioned soul, we're thinking, I am the body and this is mine. We want to become liberated souls. To come to the liberated platform, it requires a change in consciousness. Not just conscious of who I, not just thinking I am the body, but first of all, understanding myself as a soul, that I am a soul living in the body. And the soul has a relationship with the Supreme Soul. There's another soul within every body. There's not simply one soul, but there are two souls, just like two birds in the tree. One bird is the witness and the other bird is trying to enjoy. Two birds fly into the tree and the one bird is eating the fruit and the other bird is watching. So in the same way, within our body there are two souls. There is the living entity and the Supreme Soul. The Supreme Soul is the witness of our activities. We are the, like the bird which is eating the fruit. We're trying to enjoy the fruit. <coughs> and the bird, the other bird is watching and seeing. This is the Paramatma, we see. Just like here we have Paramatma, right? <laughs> Paramatma Chaitanya Das. Servant, right? So servant of the Paramatma. We want to understand our position. Two birds. One bird is a witness. Other bird is eating the fruit. What's wrong with that? Well, the fruits may be bitter, right? That's the problem. We try to enjoy the material world and we eat bitter fruits. We're often put through difficulties trials and tribulations, problems. So, we, what is the solution? Solution 
is to take shelter of Paramatma, right? <laughs> Surrender to Paramatma. That's our, what we should be doing. We should surrender ourselves to the Supreme Soul. The Paramatma is there to guide us. Paramatma, situated in the heart of all living entities. And from Paramatma comes knowledge, remembrance and forgetfulness. Paramatma remembers. We don't. We don't remember our past. Lord Krishna told Arjuna, I can remember, you do not. Arjuna was puzzled, how could you speak the Bhagavad Gita to the Sun God? Lord Krishna said, many, many births you and I have had. I can remember all of them, you cannot. So, Lord Krishna is situated there in the heart as Paramatma and he remembers everything. He's telling us, he's guiding us. In Bhagavad Gita, Paramatma is described as Upadrasta and Anumanta, the overseer and the permitter of activities. Now, we need to take shelter and surrender to Paramatma, but how to do that? That is why we need to have guidance from the spiritual teacher. The Guru comes to give guidance. Guru is the external feature of Paramatma. In the absence of, you know, Arjuna was fortunate, Krishna was directly there that he could approach Krishna. So, in what are we meant to do? We have to approach someone who is representative of Krishna. Here you can see uh, Srila Prabhupada and the Parampara, the six Goswamis. They are the representatives of Krishna. They are the Acharyas. They teach us by their example. We need to have that kind of guidance to help us to approach Krishna and to find peace. There has to be that connection with the spiritual authorities. So it's, it's an important point in spiritual practice that we don't just simply practice alone but we practice under the guidance of a spiritual teacher. And Lord Krishna, he had a spiritual teacher. Lord Krishna also went to his guru and learned everything. Lord Chaitanya also had a spiritual teacher. And Srila Prabhupada also had his spiritual teacher. It, it is said, uh, Fortunate persons will take the shelter of the spiritual teacher and learn from him. Everyone has got a mother and father. Everyone. The dogs, the bees, the mosquitoes, they all have mother and father. But only the fortunate living entity has got a spiritual teacher. And by the grace of the spiritual teacher, you get Krishna. You want to get connected to Krishna, you have to be connected to someone who knows Krishna. So that's it, why we have to have the spiritual teacher, the guru, someone who can bring us to know Krishna. Alright, are there any questions? Good, I'll ask uh on behalf of, we have five friends who are outside of our temple community, uh, so like our close friends. So if they want to uh, like do something in Krishna consciousness, what is the first step for them if they want to like do something to come close to Krishna? Well, Srila Prabhupada often would say the first step in approaching Krishna is to chant his holy name. 
the chanting of the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Right. When you chant, that is actually the beginning of your spiritual life and your connection to Krishna is made when you call out his name. You, you, we've learned about the name from the devotees of Krishna and we are chanting and we also chant the name Krishna. So this, this immediately attracts the attention of Krishna. Krishna recognizes you that you're calling his name. And then also the, the attitude in which we chant is important. We should chant with, with feeling. We, we want to develop love for Krishna, a feeling for Krishna which is based on love. And so when we chant the name, the, we should chant the name with, with some feeling from the heart even. Like, like, like a child would call for the, the father or mother. So in the same way when we are chanting Krishna's name, we want to do it with the right mood, with the right feeling. So our devotional life, our connection to Krishna begins by chanting his name. And that's something which we should do gradually. You want, you want to do it regularly. You want to make it a habit. Just like devotees of Krishna, they will chant every day. When you're, when you're sick and you take medicine, you don't just take it one time. You have to take it regularly. And remember, our disease is quite chronic. We've been in the material world a long time. And we're quite conditioned to material life. We need a strong medicine. We need a good dose to help us to get free from that conditioning. And that, that comes the more we take shelter of the holy name, the more we chant the holy name and call out to Krishna. So, Lord Chaitanya also, he had, he had told Lord Nityananda and Haridas, who were his two assistants, he requested them to go door to door and request people that they should do three things. He said, Bolo Krishna, Bajo Krishna, Koro Krishna Shiksha. Chant the name of Krishna, worship Krishna, and read the books about Krishna. So these three things are very helpful. Here's the book about Krishna, one book. There are many other books. And you may say, oh, this is a very big book. Oh, oh so big book, a thousand pages. How can I read? Yeah. <laughs> so we have small books also. <laughs> we do have smaller books, pocket books, you know. And and you can begin with the smaller books. And this book, you know, keep the big book, it's, you can say more of a reference and you can refer different places in the book. But uh, it's good to, if, if you don't read, then you have to hear. And we do have a lot of opportunity for people to hear. There are many lectures available online, you know, you go on the internet and you can find score oh, thousands of lectures and so many people speaking in so many different languages and you can hear uh, the spiritual knowledge being presented. You do have to be careful who you hear from, however. The example is given that milk is a very nice thing. But when it's touched by the lips of a serpent, then that milk has a poisonous effect. So in a similar way, if you hear from people who are not properly situated, then it can be very dangerous. It can be like a, a poison. And so you have to be careful about just who you hear from and where you go to, to hear. Now we are presenting the Bhagavad Gita and it's, you can see the title is As It Is. 
other people, they may say, oh yeah, Bhagavad Gita, yeah, we're also giving Bhagavad Gita. But, as I said, sometimes people will talk about Bhagavad Gita without Krishna, with no mention of Krishna. And so they present Bhagavad Gita as they want it to be, or as they think it is. Some people take Bhagavad Gita with a political message. Krishna is a politician. Our Krishna is a doctor, he's curing the disease. But in a sense it's true, we have a disease. Our disease, materialism. We are materialistic. We are conditioned to material life. And we have to get rid of that conditioning. And it's not easy. It takes time, it takes practice. It's possible, however, although it's difficult, it is possible. But practice is required. We have to practice. As I said, chanting Hare Krishna. It sounds easy. Oh, I've learned the mantra. I know the mantra. I can do it. Anybody can do it. Yes, it's not very... But you have to do it with quality. You have to do it to achieve the goal. The goal, remember, is to get free of this conditioning, to get out of this bodily consciousness and come to a, a spiritual consciousness, to understand ourselves as a transcendental being, as a spirit soul eternally connected to the Supreme Lord. So that takes practice to come up to that stage. And there are also some other rules like things like vegetarian. Is it important? Yes. <laughs> it is important. You should be vegetarian. Proper food. No meat, fish and eggs. And no onions and garlics. These things are not good also. So the there's some, some rules like that which are there in spiritual practice. The principles of Dharma. Satyam, Sochyam, Daya, Tapa. These things are required. So we don't encourage devotees to do gambling, take intoxic. No bad habits, right? Get rid of the bad habits. Develop good habits. Good habits mean reading Bhagavad Gita, chanting Hare Krishna. These things, these are, these are good habits. And then spiritual food, prasadam, is also very powerful. We sometimes say Krishna consciousness begins with the tongue. Krishna cannot be understood by the material senses, but he reveals himself when he's pleased by your service. And how we can serve Krishna? Well, one thing is chanting his name, and the other thing is accepting the foodstuffs which are offered to him. Prasada, the mercy of the Lord. That's an Nice way to approach Krishna, right? We hope everyone, in, everyone should enjoy prasadam. And people who enjoy prasadam, generally they will make good devotees. People who don't take prasadam, oh, very, very difficult for them to take up Krishna consciousness. And so it, it's a very important point in spiritual practice. Okay. Any other question?
Hi, Malochen. Would you like to leave the kirtan? Like to leave the kirtan? Padmalochan trained in our music course. You see.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. 
Thank you. 